Hi, this is Nancy Rolfsma with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. We are continuing our series of the Sunset Over Dublin, which is the quilt that you see behind me, and this is what the book looks like. Keep in mind the per book is available for purchase on our website, which is onpoint-tv. There's lots of other books and patterns there too, and my super cool pin cushion. So if you ever want to take a look at those, see if you want to make one for yourself, onpoint-tv. TV. So last time we were together, we made quarter square triangles using the idea of the half square triangles, putting them together. This time we're going to make a split quarter square triangle. And what's really cool about this is when you're making one, you're making two. So in the book, there are patterns for 39 different blocks, but the queen size quilt actually is a 41 block quilt. And that's because with the turnstile and the Martha Washington block, you're actually making two blocks at once. So let's go get started with the turnstile block. Now this is a the more simple block than maybe last time. The last time our block was a little bit more complicated. This one definitely is right there on the easy scale. We only need three fabrics and we need some larger squares. So we have five inch squares of our yellow and our background and the pink or magenta we've got a five and a quarter inch square. We're going to start with the magenta and the background. On the back of these large squares, you need to draw a diagonal line. This is going to be our cutting line, and this time I'm using my Boheen marking pencil. I also many times will use my friction pen, so up to you. And I'm marking the cuddle coat center line, which is the cut line. Now keep in mind, on my machine, I can move my needle over to the left or to the right to get the scant quarter of an inch from that cut line, but you might not have that ability on your machine. If you don't, if you just have a regular foot, then what you want to do is draw three lines. Here's one that's a scant quarter of an inch from the center, and then here's another that'll be a scant quarter inch from the center. So if your machine has what I would call just a stationary needle position, you're not able to move the needle a little bit more to the right so that from the edge of your foot to the needle is a scant quarter inch, then you're gonna wanna draw three lines. Now I'm only gonna do that on one of these. On the other one, because like I said, my machine, I can do that. I'm just gonna draw the center line. So if you're planning on doing a lot of this kind of work, that might be something that you might wanna consider when you're purchasing your next sewing machine. Having the ability to move the needle little increments to the right and to the left because there's some things that you'll use that for. So I've got my lawns, lines drawn and I'm putting my pink or magenta right sides together with my background. Now on the quilt I'm making through the series, I'm using the black as my background or my consistent fabric throughout. Um, on the quilt behind me, I use that pink, yellow, salmon, batik. Totally up to you, so many options, right? Now going to my sewing machine, I'm gonna sew on the scant quarter inch on either side. Now at my machine, you'll see that I have my guidelines for quilting all the way on. This is what the package looks like. Keep in mind, all of the supplies that I'm using are also available on firesidequilts.com. My friend Laura owns that right here in Grand Rapids, and she stocks all of the notions and supplies that I use, so you can always go there, fireside quilts. Now I've got that set up here, but I'm not gonna use that right off the bat. I have my regular a foot on my machine and I have taken and move, moved my needle over so that from the right hand edge of the foot to where that needle is positioned is the scant quarter inch. So that means even though I have all three of the lines drawn on this particular one, I'm going to line up the edge, right hand edge of my foot with that center drawn line and so all the way down the middle. We'll be using the guidelines for quilting guide on their next step. So I'm gonna go all the way down this one. Keeping in mind, we're making two blocks at a time, but this block is still a pretty quick one. As I get to the end, I'm gonna come off onto my leader fabric. Cut this apart, cut my blocks apart, and now sew on the other side of that center line, which is our cut line.
And then off onto my leader. So you'll see my leader has been used an awful lot. I usually use two leaders and go on and off of them as I'm sewing the entire quilt. All right, so back to the cutting board now. I'm going to first press my blocks flat. I always like to press them flat before I cut them in half. Then I can cut them in, in half. Now up until now I've always used my scissors, but keep in mind you can use your rotary cutter. If you line up your ruler going right down the diagonal, you can cut it in the middle. It's totally up to you. Honestly, for me, I think I probably use scissors more than this just because I'm usually at my ironing table. And my ironing table, I can just leave my rotary cutter there. Here in the studio, I've got everything all in one very small space so I can reach my rotary cutter. Now we're going to press these, always following the pressing solution in the book. I believe these are to be pressed to the magenta color. Really wouldn't matter with this particular quilt. You just want to, this particular block rather, you just want to be consistent. So after we've pressed them in the direction in the book, you're going to then take the yellow fabric. Now what you're going to find out is the yellow fabric, which was cut a quarter of an inch smaller to begin with, is now going to be a little bit larger than that half square triangle that I just created. So I like to center the half square triangle onto the solid square, and I want to make sure it stays in position. So I'm going to put a pin there and then draw a new cut line. Again, going right down the middle on the back of that half square triangle that I had just created. There's my center line. Now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and sew the scant quarter of an inch on either side of that line. And I'm only working one here, but you will be making four of these units. There we go, back to my cutting board. I'm gonna start always pressing that first. Just kind of flattens everything out before you go to the next step. Oops, keep getting that seam. There we go. Cut that right down the middle. And that creates our quarter square triangle just by flipping up the yellow, pressing to the point of least resistance. You can see that that seam wants to go to the yellow. I'm going to let it do that. I'm going to let it go right to the yellow. And the second half of that block, I'm going to do the same thing, pressing toward the yellow. But now you'll find out what's really unique about quarter square triangles when you make, make them with this technique, is I now have a mirror image, which means of the four blocks I'm making, I'm going to get four that look like this with the pink on the bottom and the background and the yellow here, and then four in the other direction. So after you get these made, you do need to trim them down. So these are going to be trimmed down. I can't remember what size. Let's see what the pattern says. These are going to be trimmed down to four and a half inches, and I'm going to use my block lock ruler. Now the block lock ruler is made for half square triangles, but because this block has only the seam on one side, I have found that it works really well for quarter square triangles also. So lining it up, so with the block lock ruler, you have that little groove on the bottom. So line it so that the seam that runs the full length is in that little groove, and I like to bring it all the way up to the top. But when you're doing a quarter square triangle, you have to also pay attention to this other diagonal line. This diagonal line needs to go right to the size that the block is going to be. So this block, I told you, we're trimming to four and a half inches. So here's this center line, but this diagonal line needs to go right to four and a half inches. Then you can trim on the right and the top. 
Then with the block lock, remember, you keep the pressure with the finger on the block, oops, as you spin it around, then it slides down to the size that you need. So I'm looking for a four and a half, so here's my diagonal line, four and a half on the left, the bottom, and this diagonal line is shooting right to that four and a half inch mark. So now I have a beautiful four and a half inch quarter square triangle. I'm going to get the rest of these sewn and trimmed up and then I'll show you how we'll construct two blocks at once. Now I have all of the split quarter square triangle units constructed and you see that we get two blocks because of the mirror imaging that is created. That also means you get to have some little design choices too. Here I've chosen to put the black fabric in the middle of the pinwheel and on this one I think I'm just going to go a little wild and put the pink fabric in the middle. But this is how we're going to construct it in two rows. So first I'm going to flip this one over and when you look at it actually this is kind of cool. I can actually piece them oops, this way. All right. Here's row one, here's row two. They're exactly the same. So you can design it as the um, block and then construct it, or I think in the instructions I tell you to create two of those because they are exactly the same. Now because right here at the front, at the beginning, is the bulk of the seam, I don't have to put a pin there because I'm going to start there, but I want to take it over to my sh machine that way. And same thing here. Flip that over, the bulk is right there, so that's where I'm going to start sewing at the machine. So now I'm using my guidelines for quilting to help me keep my seam consistent. With the guidelines for quilting there, that means I'm not able to push too far to the right. So I, it just kind of is helpful. If you've ever struggled with your scant quarter inch or your piecing, I think the guidelines will really help you with that. All right, now we'll go to this one. So this block is constructed with only four blocks and the blocks are really quite simple. Ending with my leader. Now we'll go and press these. And when you're pressing, just like the construction, they're actually exactly the same. So this will press, let me make some room here. Up, oh, there we go. These are going to press in the same direction. So I like to have the, if this seam is going up, I want this seam to go to the left and then this one go down. So it actually is all going in the same direction. So if I want it to press toward this block, I'm going to start with that block on top, give it a little set, and then press it up. And then this one will be exactly the same. You're pressing both of them exactly the same. There we go, like this. Set that. Press that up. Now when we look at the back of these blocks, they're exactly the same. Now when I take the first row and flip it over, now you see that the seams are going in opposite directions. And this is where we want to match it up, right here in the middle. So one seam's going in one way, one's going the other, and I'm definitely going to pin that. I want to be sure that does not move as I go to my sewing machine and start sewing that. And right here in the middle, you can see where these threads are crisscrossing. You want to try to get your seam to be pretty close to that so that your points are not floating too much in the middle. Sometimes it means you might have to go a little bit farther or a little bit less than the sc scant quarter inch seam allowance, but it really will make a difference in the block if you'll do that. So there we go. That turned out really nice. Now I'm going to seam separate. So like we've done with the pinwheel block, because this really for all intents and purposes is just a large pinwheel. So I'm going to take and separate that seam right there in the middle. Now you can take your seam ripper and get in there and just loosen up a few of those stitches, but oftentimes you don't even have to. So that's how it's going to press. 
And now you'll understand why I like the seams all going in one direction, because if you choose to do the seam separating, all of the seams spin around. And so that's how I have it indicated in the book, that these are seam separated and so they will actually spin around. Now my block is done, and I've got two blocks done at the same time, so I'm that much closer to being finished. When we come back next time, we'll be talking about flying geese, which can be a complicated block, but I'm going to show you a couple of really easy techniques to use. Please subscribe to the channel, and be sure that you hit that notification bell when you're on the very front of the On Point TV web, um, YouTube channel. There is a little bell. You want to hit that bell. That's what but that way you'll actually get a notification every time we post a new video or if I make a comment on the community page or if I'm going live so you wouldn't miss a thing. Have a great day.